All right, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be comparing Noah's winter forecast to my winter forecast in this video because I've been getting a lot of comments like, why does Noah's forecast show this, but you show something different? This video is going to probably explain all of that. But before we get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, I wanted to mention before I get started with this one, a little disclaimer, I don't hate Noah and this isn't some sort of anti-Noah video. I do think that there's a lot of areas with Noah and the National Weather Service that are great, uh, that they do a great job at. I think that this is one of the areas that is not included in those categories because uh, their winter, at least their winter seasonal forecasting has been struggling for a while now. And this photo right here should explain it to you. Uh, I'm going to, it's probably a, very, very distracting here, but let's just look at the top left first off. This was the 2018 winter forecast from them on the left and then what actually happened. So you can see that one is an example of actually the opposite of what they're calling for happening. It was very cold in the North Central and the Western United States as well is a little bit of Northern New England there. And those are all the areas that they thought would be above average temperatures and then the areas that they thought would be average were far above average temperatures there for the southeast and a lot of the east in general. Now, let's backtrack to 2017, which is on your top right corner. Now, this is an example of one that was a little bit better. So you can see the northwest, they thought in a little bit of the extreme north central United States would be below average. And for the north central, it was true. The northwest, not quite as much. But I would say this was probably the best this was the best forecast on this list here. So I'd say 2017 was the closest to getting it right that they did. And that's actually, I'd give that forecast an A. So that's a really good one. Uh, 2016, we're off again. You can see that they were calling for really warm temperatures in the southwest. But the entire west was equal, or it was average to below average temperatures. And then the entire east uh, in central United States was far above average temperatures, which they certainly weren't calling for. Again, we're looking in the bottom left corner at this point. Uh, so this was definitely a bust. And then 2015 was a bust as well. They thought the Northwest and the North central United States would be the warmest as well as the West coast. And they thought the South central would be the coldest. And it ended up only being cold in the Southwest. And then really the whole northeast and north central United States was far above average temperatures. So I'd give that forecast an, a 50% success um, just because of the fact that they did get the north central right, but that's about it. Uh, but the entire east was far above average temperatures for the 2015 to 2016 winters. Uh, this was, when I said 2018, that was tw 2018 to 2019, 2017 to 2018, 2016 to 2017 and then 2015 to 2016. Because if that was 2014 to 2015, we'd be talking a completely different story. So I hope this gives you a little bit of a background with what you're looking at as far as the success rate with NOAA. And if you ask me, my forecast for 2018 was far, far better than NOAA's forecast. We'll get to that at the end so you can see my previous one. It wasn't very good. It was probably a case of being about 50% right, just as NOAA's 2015 forecast was. So we'll see that in a little bit. So here's what they're calling for right now. This is their forecast right now for this winter. This is what people have been kind of talking to me about saying, well, why is it showing this and you're showing something completely different? Why would this be the case? Because NOAA is obviously this very big trusted source. That doesn't mean they're great at everything. You just saw their success rate over the past four winters and it's not a very good track record. Uh, and then, so that was what they're forecasting. Here's what I'm forecasting. So you can see there's a drastic difference as I'm calling for below average temperatures for the North Central and Great Lakes regions of the United States as well as some of the Northeastern regions of the United States. But actually, it's not too far off. Their equal chances region is kind of how they play it safe and it still doesn't save them sometimes. But by calling for equal chances instead of average conditions, they're able to say, well, if you saw below average temperatures, we said there was an equal chance that it would be warm or cold. You just ended up getting cold. So basically... Uh, they have a foolproof way of making sure that they're never held accountable for their forecasts being wrong, in my opinion, with the seasonal forecast. Uh, again, not hating on NOAA. That's just the facts for their seasonal forecast and monthly forecast. Uh, but their equal chance region happens to be where I'm calling for most of the cold to be this winter. And that would mean, in my opinion, that we probably agree because they are they do have a little bit of a warm bias. We've seen this in the past where they 
are slow to call for cold conditions, but they're very quick to call for warm conditions when they think it might be warm. Uh, so I do think that they have a bit of a warm bias. But nevertheless, our forecasts actually do agree quite a bit. They agree with the warm out west, and so do I. Uh, and their equal chances region, again, is where I'm calling for most of the cold to be. The only thing I don't agree with is the warm in New England and then the warm in the southeast, at least to that extent. So why was Noah's forecast so off last year and why was mine pretty much off last year as well? Well, there's long range oscillations that are, you know, ocean temperatures or air patterns. And then there's short term oscillations and air patterns. And this is all opinion. Somebody could argue that one is long range and one is short range. But in my opinion, oscillations like the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, and the PNA, the Pacific North American Oscillation, all three of these are what I consider short range oscillations. There's other ones like uh, the East Pacific Oscillation and other oscillations that are a little bit less commonly used that are also short range oscillations. These ones in no way can be necessarily forecasted any time in advance besides maybe a week. We've seen success rates sometimes at about a month out at forecasting these or a month or shorter, but for the most part, it's it's really the models flip-flop on what they want these oscillations to do. So if you hear somebody say, we're going to be looking at it, at least with like a sure, they're like, sure thing, it's going to be a negative oscillation this winter, they're fooling everybody. They're trying to fool everybody because that's just not something that we can with confidence forecast. Now, there is signs that we will have at times a negative NAO, like the warmer than average sea surface temperatures we are seeing around Greenland and Iceland. That's a good sign that for the most part, we will be dealing with some times or more times than normal, a negative and NAO. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm forecasting this winter, we're going to have a negative NAO for most of the time. It's just not, it doesn't work like that. And same thing, the Arctic oscillation, there really is no sign. Uh, maybe you could say snowpack or the amount of ice going on around the Arctic regions. But I would argue that there's not really any sure way to forecast the AO uh, far in advance. Now the PNA, if the PDO, which is a completely different oscillation, but if the warm, if the temperatures of the ocean around North America uh, on the West Coast are warmer than normal, that would probably influence the Pacific North American oscillation to be positive. But again, it's kind of like the NAO where it's not really a sure thing. Now, the interesting thing is NOAA's precipitation forecast, I agree with for a bit of it. Now, for California and out West, I do have, I do agree with that quite a bit. The South Central, I can't really disagree. There is a chance that we will see drier conditions out there uh, for Texas and Louisiana, but I'm not really calling for it, but it is possible. But definitely the above average precipitation up there in the North Central and Northeastern United States, that looks like they're calling for clippers to be quite common. Uh, anybody that knows these storm tracks knows that this is, if we have above average precipitation in this region during the winter time, it's pretty you know, we're pretty confident that there was a lot of clipper systems that winter. And if they're calling for clipper systems, they're calling for times of cold, times for times of very, very cold temperatures for the north central and northeastern United States in those eastern regions. The basically the central and eastern United States, they are thinking there's going to be times of, of big time troughs, big time cold spells that bring these uh, the jet the northern jet very far south because clipper systems don't go south of the northern jet for the most part they're usually within an area of very very cold temperatures um, and they're usually weaker than a lot of you know nor'easters and other storm tracks we typically see so for them calling for this tells me that they're also pretty confident that the north central and eastern United States will be dealing with colder than normal conditions a lot of the time this winter. Now, here's my view on a clipper system. Uh, this was from, I think, my second or third winter forecast here. And you can see moderate snowfall for a lot of these regions to the north of the storm track. And then surrounding there, light snow slash snow showers. So you can see this is going to follow just above the northern jet. So we would need a trough in the east to produce these types of snowstorms. And you can see this looks pretty consistent with what we just saw on their precipitation forecast, which is very interesting. Also, keep in note... That a, that a clipper system can very easily become a Miller B. Nor'easter that looks just like this one and bring heavy snow to a lot of those New England areas. 
keep that in mind as well. Uh, here is what happened last winter as far as exact temperatures, because a lot of people were wondering about my previous uh, temperature forecast. So keep this in your mental memory. And then let's take a look at my winter forecast. And right off the bat, you can tell there is some big time differences. Now, this was actually one of the first videos I ever made on this channel. We've come a long way, but the accuracy was about 50%. Now, let me explain. The cold air that we had there for the below normal, if you move that over just to the west and move that up to the Dakotas instead of the Great Lakes, you're looking at a very, very good forecast for last winter, and nobody would have any complaints really. Now, the west was not above normal like I was calling for. That should have been located more in the southeast, but those two things are the only... You basically, the cold needs to be shifted a little bit west, and then the warm was definitely, I, I, I upplayed that for the west for sure. So those are the only two big things that made this forecast a bust, but besides that, it was a pretty darn good forecast. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video kind of explaining Noah's history with winter forecasting and why I'm not really worried that they're calling for something different, and quite frankly, I expected them to call for something like this. And you can expect for the next 20 years that every single winter, they will think that it will be above average temperatures every single year for basically every location with the exception of maybe a couple states sometimes, uh, which just is not the case and that's not going to happen. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Share this with your friends and family over social medias if you think they'll enjoy this or will find this video useful. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.